Hey, what is going on you guys? Today I'm gonna to be explaining exactly the steps that you need to take if you wanna become an apprentice electrician. All right, well, hey guys, my name is Steven, and if you're new to this channel, I'm gonna be releasing one new video per week. So if you wanna stay up to date and you like what I have to say, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you can be notified every time that I release a new video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining exactly what an electrician apprenticeship is and the steps, kind of an overview of the steps that you need to take to become one. So in the coming weeks, I'm gonna be explaining more in depth what each step in this process looks like, from applying to taking your aptitude test and how to study for that. Um, and I also wanna make a video about how to interview, and I may even do sort of a mock interview so you can see an example of the answers that I gave when I applied for this apprenticeship. So if this is something that you want to uh, stay up to date with and you are interested in pursuing this as a career, you're not gonna to wanna to miss those videos. So. Anyways, I hope I can be a great resource for you, and I hope that you enjoy what I have to say. So the question that brought you here today is, how do you become an electrician? And the answer is through an apprenticeship. Now, whether you go the union route or the non-union route, the process is going to look a little bit different, but for the most part, the idea of an apprenticeship is going to be the same across the board. So becoming an electrical apprentice, what that is, is it's basically just a process that you go through in order to become a journeyman electrician. And what a journeyman electrician is, is it's someone that has completed their apprenticeship, they've completed the minimum number of on-the-job hours, they have completed their minimum requirement of classroom time, they have taken their state licensing test, and they now have their journeyman's license. So there's really, as I said, there's two components that go into completing an apprenticeship. Your on-the-job hours and your classroom time. So let's talk about the on-the-job portion of the apprenticeship. Now, here in Portland, Oregon, we have a minimum number of 8,000 required on-the-job hours that you must complete before you can turn out and become a journeyman electrician. So when you're first starting your apprenticeship, you're most likely gonna be working side-by-side -side with a journeyman. Now, if you're anything like me, when you first get into this trade, it's gonna feel really overwhelming because there is so much that you have to learn and you may feel like, how am I supposed to learn all of this in four to five years? Okay, when I first got into this trade, I knew pretty much nothing about construction. I didn't know even the difference between what a drill and an impact was. But you know what? That's okay. Because every day when you show up to work, um, if you have a good journeyman, they're going to be showing you everything. Okay, you're going to, over time, day in and day out, by putting in your hours, you're going to slowly learn what the different material is. Uh, you're going to learn how to use different tools. You're going to learn all the different uh, tips and tricks that your journeyman show you. And the idea is that by the end of the four to five years that you put in, in your apprenticeship, you are going to become a well-rounded electrician, and you're going to feel confident working on your own. So here's a quick overview of what the schooling portion looks like. Now, every apprenticeship is set up a little bit differently. Um, a lot of apprenticeships require you to go to night school, which can be nice because then you don't miss any uh, days of work throughout the week, so you're gonna be getting full paychecks. Now, here in IBEW Local 48, the way this works is we have on and off terms. So we're either going to school in the spring and the fall, or the summer and winter. Now, the way that works is we basically take one day off of work each week, and we go to school for eight hours that day. So I like that because, you know, I'm not tired when I'm going to school, um, I can be really focused, and I can get a lot out of my classroom time. Now, the classroom time in an apprenticeship is really, really important because there is so much to learn in this trade, and, you know, there's a lot of different theory that you have to have down, um, and it's a dangerous trade. Okay, you wanna make sure that you're being as safe as you can and a lot of that safety um, you're gonna learn from school. So in school, you're gonna be learning anything from AC theory to DC theory. You're gonna learn how to wire transformers. You're gonna learn about fire alarm. You're gonna learn low voltage. 
Um, you're gonna learn about motor controls. So there's a lot of different things that you learn in school, but uh, the idea is just like with the on the job hours, that by the time you finish all of your terms of school, and by the time that you finish all of your on the job hours, you're going to know how to do your job and do it well, and you're gonna have all of the knowledge that is needed to do this job. As I said in our last video, electricians make great money, but that's because we dedicate four to five years of our lives learning how to do this job and how to do it well. So that's kind of how an apprenticeship works, and now I wanna explain the process that it takes in order to become an apprentice. Now, the first step would be just to do research, right? That's what you're doing right now when you're watching this video. But you're gonna need to decide, do you wanna go the union route or the non-union route? And the reason why is because if you decide that you want to be a union electrician, you are actually going to look up what the local union in your area is. And you can do that by doing a simple Google search. And once you know where that training center is, you're gonna actually wanna call them. You're gonna to wanna to figure out what days they are accepting applications go to the website and see what the specific requirements are to join. If you go the non-union route, you're gonna to wanna to do a Google search for whatever companies um, are in your area, and you're gonna to wanna, to, I would recommend calling every single one of them, finding out if they're hiring, and then apply for every single company. So going off of my personal experience um, doing a union apprenticeship, this is what that process looks like. So I beat UW Local 48, when they are hiring, they are accepting applications one day each week. And that is usually on Wednesdays and there's a certain window of time that you can actually go in and apply. Now, when you go to apply, you are actually going to bring a little packet of information that you have put together. Now, it is important that you make yourself stand out um, amongst everybody else that's applying because this is a very competitive program to get into. Okay, there's a lot of people that wanna become electricians and they're only gonna choose the best of the best. So here's what you need to bring with you when you apply to become an electrician. The things that we need to have in IBW Local 48 is our high school transcript. Uh, we also need to have photo ID, there's an application fee. Uh, let's see, you need to bring a resume, spend your time on your resume, make it look really good. Um, I would recommend bringing a cover letter too that's just going the extra mile and making yourself stand out a little bit more. Um, and then here, we also are, um, they request that we bring photos of projects that we have completed for anything that we want to let the interviewers um, know about us when we actually get to the point where we interview. So at this point, you've turned in your application and they have checked and you have met the minimum requirements. Now, after about three months, they're gonna schedule you to take an aptitude test. Now what the aptitude test consists of is a reading portion and a math portion. And the reason they wanna check for this is because reading and math are something that you're gonna be using a lot. And you're gonna be using that just about every day on the job. <clears throat> so if you have not gone to school for a while, uh, by the time that you are applying for this apprenticeship, I would recommend brushing up on your algebra. I would also recommend just practicing reading. Um, that way you are ready to go and that way you can pass this aptitude test with flying colors. So the last portion is the interview. And this is without a doubt the scariest part of the application process. Now here um, in our local union, we have thousands of people that apply every single year. So this is your time to shine. This is your time to stand out amongst everybody else. And you're gonna let them know exactly why they should pick you for this apprenticeship. Now I'm not gonna go into details right now about um, how to interview and interview well, but I will be making a video where I'm going to be talking one about the aptitude test, how to do well for that. Um, and I'm also going to be making a video about how to interview and how to do a really good job with that. So overall, this whole process from applying to interviewing is going to be about a three month process. And after you're done interviewing, you're going to just wait. And what you're gonna be waiting for is a letter in the mail that's going to let you know your number on the list of apprentices that they are going to um, have start the apprenticeship. So now the way the list works is the lower the rank, the better. So here, um, if you rank anywhere between one and I think it's 18, um, that means that you are gonna be in the next class that they have 
that starts the apprenticeship. Okay, and say you rank 19, well that means that you're gonna be on the next class that they have start the apprenticeship. The higher up that you are on the list, the smaller the chances get of you actually getting accepted into the program. Okay, I ranked, I believe it was in the low 60s, and so that actually took about three months um, after the time that I interviewed for me to start the apprenticeship. So 60s, pretty good. Um, my brother ranked, I, th I think like 118. He still got accepted into the program too. Um, but the higher up that you get ranked, you know, the, the less of a chance you have of actually getting into the program. Now it's not all bad news. If you rank really high on the list, you didn't ruin your chance of getting in. It just means that you're gonna need to take some extra steps if you really wanna do this as a career. So here, um, if you want to re-interview and you want another shot at getting a lower rank on the list, well, you have to wait six months. And during that time, you're gonna want to maybe take a college class on electrical theory. You're maybe gonna wanna get some sort of on-the-job experience. And the idea is that by the time that you interview again, you're gonna be able to present yourself as a better applicant and a better fit for this trade. That way they're gonna choose you and hopefully you'll get a lower rank on the list. Now, even a lot of people that interview a second time, they don't get accepted. Sometimes even a third time they won't get accepted. So here's kind of the thing that I would recommend doing if you really want to do this and you just can't seem to get a good rank, I would really recommend going to one of the contractors that you want to work for in your area and ask about becoming a material handler. Now what a material handler is, is it's somebody that is pretty much just a helper for everybody. Okay, they help apprentices and they help journeymen and they're gonna be bringing different materials to you as you need it. They're gonna be cleaning up the laydowns. Um, they're gonna be doing kind of all the heavy lifting, all of that kind of stuff. Now, it's not a glamorous job by any means, but that is the route that a lot of people take um, in order to kind of get their foot in the door and show that they really want to do this as a career. So if you spend six months, one year, two years as a material handler, by the time that you go to reapply, they're gonna see, wow, this person really wants this as a career, and they are most likely gonna let you in um, as an apprentice. So that is what I would recommend doing, and um, it's worked out for most people that I have talked to. I'm sure it'll work out for you. All right, so whether you made it in after interviewing your first time and you got a really good rank, or you had to interview several times before getting your good rank and getting called to start the apprenticeship, you're finally in, kind of. So here in IBEW Local 48, and I think the way a lot of unions work, is there is one more step in the application process, and this is boot camp. Okay, so essentially what this is, is when you get your call to start, before actually going to a job site, they want to be absolutely sure that you are a good fit for this trade, and so there is a two-week period where you're going to be going to school every day, and um, they're just going to teach you the safety requirements. They're going to teach you the basics of how to wire things up, how to bend pipe. You know, you're, you're going to, it's kind of like schooling 101. You're just going to get a quick crash course of, uh, of how to do this job before you actually start. But really what this is used for is a way for them to sift out anybody that they think is not fit for the trade. And let me tell you, if you have made it to the boot camp stage of the application process, do not mess this up. Okay, there was actually two people in my boot camp that they just, you know, they made it to this point and there was one guy that kept falling asleep in class and there was another guy that didn't pass the drug test. And, you know, I just can't even imagine getting to that point and being so close to starting your career as an electrician and then just messing it up. If you mess up um, your time in boot camp, you have most likely messed up and you may not um, have any chance of actually doing this because they see that you're not somebody that they want um, to to have as, as an electrician. So anyways, uh, that's kind of the last step in the process. But once you have completed your boot camp, you are in, you're going to be sent out to a job site and you're going to start working. So there it is. There's my quick overview of what an apprenticeship is and how to start an apprenticeship. Now, uh, like I said, subscribe, turn on the notification bell because I will be releasing more videos in the coming weeks where I go in depth of each step of this process. Please leave me comments. I wanna know exactly what you want to know so that way I can answer any questions that you have. 
Um, and yeah, I'm excited to help you guys out. I hope that you have found this helpful and I hope that you guys uh, start this as a career and I hope that you guys have a great day.